Let's talk about PE, which is percent extraction, percent TDS coffee, which is percent total dissolved solids coffee, and brewing control. And uh, I found this picture on the internet at the site that's listed on the bottom. Um, uh, I can imagine taking a pickaxe to a giant <laughs> bean. Anyway, I thought it was pretty cool. Now, uh, these are scanning electron microscope images of green and roasted coffee beans. And um, I don't know, it's a little tough to see, but maybe it shows up on your copy. But down here, uh, there's a little scale bar, and it says 20 micron, 20 micrometers, where this lowercase Greek letter mu stands for micro, just like C stands for centimeters. And 20 micrometers, well, there's uh, 1 times 10 to the 6th micrometers, or 1 million micrometers, equal to 1 meter. So that little scale bar is uh, 20 times 10 to the minus 6th meters, or 2.0 times 10 to the minus 5th meters. So this is an extreme close-up. And scanning electron microscopes are fascinating instruments, but uh, uh, mostly beyond the scope of what we're doing. If, if you want it, uh, I have used one before uh, multiple times, and I'm happy to talk more about them if you're interested in office hours. Uh, so then here's the green coffee bean. Notice um, how it compares to the roasted coffee bean. The roasted coffee bean has a lot of holes in it, and those holes... Uh, are where the coffee has been roasted and there's been reaction that has created gases or reactions, I should say. Reactions created gases such as carbon dioxide. CO2 is carbon dioxide. That's in the gas phase. And those gases... Uh, expand as it heats up, so it goes, which expand as they get heated. To eventually crack or pop these holes. And I'll use the term crack instead of pop, but either one works. Uh, because we call them first crack and second crack while we're roasting, to crack open uh, these holes, or really they're uh, cavities, because they're not, well, the gas has to get out, I guess. So let's call them holes uh, in the beans. And I've got the link down here at the bottom for those uh, the images that I found, pretty cool images. Um, yeah, so this right here is what the bean looks like uh, in extreme close-up. This one is the same scale bar, 20 micrometers is that distance. The same scale bar for both of these images, though it is not the exact same spot. I can tell you from doing scanning electron uh, microscopy that you can't, uh, it's very hard to get the same spot. Uh, you have to take pretty serious measures to do it. So now let's talk about percent extraction more specifically. And what you might imagine is if you take this bean and uh, you're going to, on some level, place it into water, and then that water is going to try and get into all these surfaces, and it might get to this surface first, right, or any of these surfaces, and then it would have to sink into the beans. But the surface, or each of these surfaces, is where it is easiest for the water to um, reach the beans. And in fact, I might say that this sort of looks like a close-up of a sponge, too. And the sponge has holes, and you can get water in them, but then the water soaks into but the uh, water, is the, so the surface is where the water starts.
and looking at this bean and there's just a cross section of the bean then uh, what we can say is that the more surface area there is the more water can get to the different parts of the bean so uh, more surface area allows the water to get to more parts of the bean allows the water to get to more parts of the bean and uh, now let's talk uh, and revisit percent extraction so PE is going to be percent extraction and it is the grams of coffee solids divided by grams of dry grounds uh, times 100 percent and so what you might imagine is that if you had uh, 20 grams of dry grounds and that through this water interacting with your coffee grounds it was able to get 3.0 grams of coffee solids out of this we can run our calculator and do this it'd be 3 divided by 20 times 100 that would be 15 percent extraction uh, extraction or PE percent extraction equals 15 percent so uh, and then what I want to emphasize here is that the coffee solids that end up in your coffee that you drink come from a very real place they come from uh, these places uh, from water basically getting into absorbing into the beans and dissolving those coffee solids those different molecules that are in there now uh, the next thing I just want to tackle is how it gets so uh, percent extraction deals with how you get the coffee solids out of the beans and then uh, percent TDS solids deals with getting those coffee solids into the cup of coffee so percent TDS coffee is getting those coffee solids into the cup of coffee and so percent TDS coffee equals uh, grams of coffee solids divided by grams of brew or coffee brew or however you want to do it times 100 percent and this time let's assume that we have the same 3.0 grams of coffee solids but now we're going to have let's say 300 grams of brew times 100 percent and this time I have 3 divided by 300 oh, 300 times 100 and I get 1 percent and I'm just going to put 1.0 percent um, TDS coffee and we've been working with some of these numbers before but just wanted to uh, really bring it home so the coffee solids come out of the coffee beans and end up in our coffee cup now uh, in the coffee beans so broadly speaking there are 20 percent good solubles those are the parts that you want in your coffee so want in coffee and here they are pictorially represented as red being acids and caffeine yellow being lipids and fats and blue being melanoidins and uh, green being carbohydrates and fiber those are going to be the bad solubles and then there's 70 percent of the coffee bean that is just insoluble 
not going to dissolve in water, right? So let's just make sure, let's revisit that. Soluble in water means that it will dissolve in water, okay? So uh, our process and what we want to optimize is we want all of these things, the good solubles, to dissolve uh, in the water to make our coffee. And we don't want to uh, have the 10% of the carbohydrates in fiber parts. And the good news is, in general, the carbohydrates in fiber parts, they, they are soluble, but they tend to dissolve more slowly. So if you allow your coffee to brew, say, in a clever dripper for a long period of time, that's when you start to see these. And so we get this idea that you want to get all the good stuff out, right? If you do it too short, you won't get all the good, too, uh, too short of an extraction time, you won't get all of the good stuff out. Too long of an extraction time, you'll get all the good stuff and some of the bad stuff. So, uh, and again, these are broad terms and everybody has a different perspective on what is good to them but these have been broadly agreed upon. And then, but again, 70% of the coffee bean, it's, you could leave it in there forever and you're still, you're, you're, right? If you forget about your coffee, come back 10 minutes, 20, 30 minutes later, there's still grounds there. It didn't all dissolve, of course. I think that's what I want to say about that. Yep. Okay, so. This one's supposed to have a title on it. I'm not sure what happened to my titles, but I can write them on. So this is gonna say grinding coffee beans. One way to control brewing And uh, we've seen this, we've done the grinding activity. So when you take, uh, and represented by blue, we might see is a simple representation of the surface area of the whole bean. Even if it was cut in half, but the idea is uh, water might be trying to get into this bean from the outside. If it was cut in half, it could get to this surface right there. But when we grind the bean up, we get, uh, let me make sure I'm using this term properly, exponentially more surface area. And so, for example, if a coffee bean has a diameter or a rough length of one centimeter and the some so the water is coming in from the outside and it has to go all the way in here to get to the good coffee tasting parts in the center of the bean it might have to travel 0 0.5 centimeters and it's going to take a long time to do that so we grind it up all of a sudden now at least in this picture maybe we say that our size is 0 0.5 one centimeter and then to get into the inside of this it only has to travel 0 0.05 centimeters which takes a lot longer time the water is coming from the outside and you get a lot better um, a lot of the good stuff out of the coffee a lot more quickly so grinding definitely as we've seen as you've experienced a great way to control brewing. And you can see that we've got all kinds of grinds. We've got uh, fine, we've got medium, we've got coarse, we've got different, you know, those are just the easy ones, but you can do a sort of a, a coarse medium or a coarse fine. There's lots of different ways to do this. And this is what we're trying to do, is we're trying to control it. Now, if you're using a blade grinder, you're going to have a particle size distribution you will generally have uh, some fine particles, some medium particles, 
and then some larger particles as well. But we try and shake the grinder, at least I do, in order to evenly grind the particles as much as possible. It's a process, right? Um, now, this slide it deals with extraction time. And extraction time is another way to control brewing. Uh, for example, uh, let's assume we had three. So these are uh, now, uh, each of these is a ground coffee particle. And we might call this uh, coarsely ground. And what you can see is that over time, the water comes from the outside and it is able to dissolve the solubles, the good solubles, that is. But in 30 seconds, it can't get anywhere near the center. This would be what's called under extracted. Pretty severely, by the way. 120 seconds, so uh, still under extracted. And at least here, we have fully extracted perfectly. Um, although I'm not quite sure this is accurately representative of the fact that we could get, well, we would get some water into all of the parts of the bean. And one of the beautiful things about the Clever Dripper is that we can control these times in a much clearer way than if you're using some of the other pour over methods. Now, we can combine the two, and of course this is what we're doing. We're combining grind size with extraction time. You can see that if you have a fine grind, you can perhaps extract fully in 30 seconds or a significantly shorter time. Whereas if it's a medium grind, you're going to need longer and a coarse grind, you're going to need even longer. But it's not as simple as that. Oh, there's a little bit of a title there. So if you have small particles and you do uh, sort of small or fine, medium and coarse particles, what we tend to see is that you can have over extracted here for 120 seconds. And this orange area would represent we were getting some of that fiber and some of those carbohydrates that are the bad solubles. We have optimal extraction for a medium grind. And then we have under extracted. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to balance, uh, it says extraction is a balance between, um, oh, yes, is a balance between, well, uh, over and under extracting, so setting the right grind size and setting the right um, time, extraction time, right? You can have longer extraction times if you have bigger beans, um, but you do risk over extracting them in some ways. And finally, an example of sort of putting some of these variables together using the coffee brewing control chart. Um, and here's some of the key variables. So our brew is the ratio, R is for ratio, of um, grams of water to grams of dry grounds. So our absorbance, uh, and everybody gets a slightly different R absorbance value, but minus 1.75 R absorbance is grams of water retained or trapped in grounds per gram of dry grounds.
and uh, percent TDS coffee. We've already talked about that. Um, and let's see, those are, those are, uh, oh, right, and we make the coffee and the percent TDS coffee is 1.7%. So we use our handheld refractometer. We measure this number. And the question is, where are you, where am I, where are we on the brewing control chart? What can you do to get to the ideal part of the chart? And the coffee control chart has percent TDS coffee and percent extraction on it. So we're going to use these values to get to um, the percent extraction. And let's suppose that when we made our coffee, Ah, yes. So we made, uh, we started with 20 grams of coffee, and therefore we started with, let's see, so 15 equals grams of water over 20 grams of dry grounds. We would expect then, so if we cross multiply, 15 times 20 equals one times the grams of water. That means that we would want to start with 300 grams of water. And um, we can also figure out that if we have dry, uh, grams of dry grounds is still 20 grams, we can figure out uh, with our minus 1.75 minus 1.75 equals 20 grams of dry grounds. And our x will be our grams of water trapped in the grounds. This is going to be cross multiply minus 1.75 times 20 equals x. I got my minus 1.75 times 20. That's minus 35. Of water trapped in the grounds. And that will allow us to calculate our grams of coffee, our grams of brew that we're expecting to get. So 300 minus 35. Is 265 grams of brew. And the last thing we need to do, and I have another page here for us, so it says continue. So let's see, um, is calculate our percent extraction. Now yep. we can do it in red. Remember, our percent extraction is going to be grams of coffee solids. over our grams of uh, dry grounds times 100%. We know our grams of dry grounds, but we do not know our grams of coffee solids. We have to fill in for the percent TDS first. For percent TDS, it's going to be grams of coffee solids over grams of brew, which we do know, at least theoretically, right? We're doing some calculations based on our best guesses. Our grams, oh, and that's times 100%. So our grams of brew that we estimate was 265 grams of brew. We know that our percent TDS that we measured was 1.7%. And we can cross multiply again to, oh, and this 100% will be on the top. So let me write this one out. This is going to be uh, 1.7 times 265, uh, right, equals 1 from down here times grams of coffee solids 
times 100. So that's going to be on the top. If we can multiply all this out, 1.7 times 265, I get 450.5 equals 1 times grams of coffee times 100. That's just going to be 100 times grams of coffee solids. Divide by 100 to get grams of coffee solids by itself. So that's going to be 450.5 divided by 100. I get 4. Point, let's just go with 4.5 grams of coffee solids, which we can put back in here. Remember, we have 20 grams of dry grounds. We have 4.5 grams of coffee solids. And our percent extraction is 4.5 divided by 20 times 100, 22.5%. So let's put that back on the screen there. 22.5% is our PE, and our percent TDS is 1.7. So we're going to be at 22.5. So that's going to be right about there. 22. So a quarter of the way to 20, between 22 and 24. And then we got 1.7. This line right here. So we have located our coffee on this chart and it is right at this green dot right there. And we are not in the ideal spot conventionally. We have gone beyond the percent extraction by a little bit, and we have gone beyond the TDS percent TDS coffee a little bit. And what we would love to do is we would like to bring this back down into the ideal region. Um, we might call this over extracted and over concentrated as well. And ways in which we can do that. Well, if you've got a too high a percent extraction, so PE too high, what you might think is that you can use a shorter time. Because less time will extract less of those solubles. Um, you could use a larger grind. because that will allow you to get less of that stuff that's in the beans. And those are two simple ways. Uh, so you can do other things with temperature. You can do, um, if you stirred it using the Clever Dripper, then you wouldn't want to stir it because stirring helps get more of those solids out. Um, and then here, oh, and the opposite, if P is too low, you'd want to use a longer time and a smaller grind size potentially. And let's see, percent TDS coffee uh, was also too high. Well, the biggest thing you can do for that is use more water. So use more water. And the more water will uh, essentially dilute the coffee solids that you're getting out. It's not perfect because more water um, can tend to uh, extract a little bit more as well. But in the end, you will tend to lower your percent TDS coffee. Uh, and of course, uh, you could also just add water to your coffee after you make it. That is, as you've seen in the videos, an acceptable method to get into the uh, ideal region here. Although typically... I've seen people make very good coffee by adding water after it. Uh, you might want to try it. You might want to just add more water from the beginning. Uh, but just to be clear, what I'm saying is you make your coffee, you have your coffee in your cup, and then you just add water to it. Also an acceptable way of doing things, although somewhat unconventional. And that's a little bit more about uh, percent extraction, percent TDS solids, and how to control your brew.